Welcome to the Empower Me Show with Pam Bright. This show is all about honoring you as a spiritual being, having a human experience. You are here for a reason, and it's no mistake that you are here on earth right now. Spirit has guided you to this very moment in time, so you could hear the messages Pam is about to share with you. She is a multi-dimensional healer, light language channel, transformation coach, wife and mother committed to helping you discover the tools and practices to empower you to live the best life you can. You get to choose the spirit path you take. You can connect to the spiritual guidance already all around you. Get ready to live a fully empowered life. This is the Empower Me Show. Welcome back to the Empower Me Show. My name is Pam Bright. I am your hostess for this program. I'm so glad you joined me once again to this hour of amazing discovery in who you are as a spiritual being having a human experience. And I am here with my dear special friend, Lorelai Shamayo, who is the uh, really the, the facilitator and the owner of the energy <laughs> of the MeWe Fairs. They, that's Metaphysical Empowerment and Wellness Expos um, here in the Northwest. I am so glad that you're here, Lorelai. Welcome to the show. Hi, Pam. It's great to be here. I'm so glad you're here. So we're going to talk about all kinds of things today, including um, how Lorelai uh, came to be with me as um, as the hostess of this program and how we met and how she is really opening the doorway for those practitioners that are ready to come out of hiding and into their own gifts of spiritual awakening for you on the planet. So welcome again to this hour of amazing content. We are always surprised and really honored uh, to let spirit flow in this hour and really throughout our world. Uh, but definitely at this platform is really about touching as many people as possible who are ready and willing to accept support of all kinds for their own spiritual journey. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So I have a new little friend here I'm going to share with you. I just got this for my birthday. And so we got a little bit more color coming into our solar plexus and our, our, our column of light in the center of our bodies right here. So think of this as your pillar of light, which I talk about. Uh, there's all the different chakra colors in here. I don't know if it's all of them, but there's many of them. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aha, there is seven. <laughs> so all of the colors of the chakras are represented here inside of us and inside of this little wand here. So I use it as my grounder to help me stay centered and focused. And I invite you to find a special rock, um, an emblem, a statue, a crystal, I also have another crystal here to help focus the energy. So, and there is another one for you. Thank you, Lorelai. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to get centered here so that we can be letting go of all of the external stuff of the day and really own who we are in this moment in time. If you're in a place where you can close your eyes, awesome. If you need to stay awake and focused, then please be safe and do that, driving or working or whatever you're doing. If you can close your eyes and use your breathing to slow down, release your stress, get into this moment, and really know that right now is all we have right now is all there is and it's okay it's okay to be imperfect it's okay to not know it's okay to wonder it's okay to be in discovery it's okay just what you can even use that as a mantra today just take a nice deep breath 
<sighs> let it out and just say to yourself, it's okay. I am okay right now. And so now we ask the creator of all that is, the one who lives and breathes within all things, to come into this moment in time, this space, this sacred vortex that we get to live and breathe within. And we ask that all of our guides, teachers, and angels, the ones that love us so much, come into this now and embrace us in our earthly experiences. We ask that they guide us in our lives and really allow us to shine into who we are. And we ask the light beings now to come in and hone us into our wisdom and ground us into this knowing in this moment now. Ayake du baba ye, anana zena ye, ayana zana ye, ayana zana ye, ayana zana ye, anahiya. And we thank the Earth Mother, Gaia, for assisting us in grounding into the center of her so that we remember that in order to fully do our jobs here as spirit in form, we need to be connected to her and be fully in our bodies. And so we thank her for her presence and for her wisdom today. And as you take a breath, just go ahead and get back up into your heart space gathering all those parts of you back in. You can just call them in through intention and invite them back. Maybe they want to come in the top of your head or your third eye. Just invite them back gently and with intention. And when you're ready, you can come back and open your eyes. Welcome back, everyone. It is another beautiful day, Thursday, uh, June 15th, I think it is, 2023. Oh my goodness, what an amazing time in history right now. <laughs> amazing time. We're all opening to who we are, and many of us are just waking up. Some of you are just waking up to, who am I? What am I about? Why am I here? How am I supposed to be of service to the world and make a difference in who I am and who you are? And others of us have been going around for a while. We remember who we are. We remember some of our past times, our past lives. Some of us are even future tellers and know and can see uh, some of the things coming up in the world. Um, and today I have a beautiful soul who is able to read your eyes and she has been gifted in that. And we are so honored that you're here to assist us with that, Lorelai. So welcome to the show and welcome to really this time of exploration into the soul, because from my understanding, from what you've said, the eyes are the access to the soul, I think is how you put that. The eyes are definitely a window to the soul. Yes, they are. Wonderful. So how did you, we would love to hear kind of where you came from, what you used to be doing in the world, and how in the world did you get back to this place of knowing with uh, the intuition and being able to read people's eyes? Yeah, and maybe I want to start off by mentioning too that in addition to eyes being a window to the soul, I believe they're also the window to our soulmates. So I'll bring that all around. So I think like most of us, I started out where I I was more aware when I was little and then forgot 
all kinds of things. Like I like most people, right? We had to kind of close down. And one way that I did practice my gifts when I was little is I grew up in a challenging family. And in order to make it through my family, I had to practice my skills of pattern recognition and details and reading people. And so I got some practice reading people in my family so that I could get through the things that were hard. And then I wanted to get love and attention from the people that raised me. So I really followed the pathway of my grandma. She loved science and evolution. And so I ended up studying molecular biology and went the direction of science and how to apply science in the world. And I really had always been interested in people. So biology and psychology really were my interests. But I went off more in the technical direction. And then it wasn't until I was in my 30s that finally that calling for working with people um, came back up. And I, I wondered about studying um, psychology at that point. And instead, I feel really grateful. I was able to find um, some teachers and I learned about how to be aware of our body experience and what shows through our eyes, through our body, our eyes, and really our energy as a way of reading people and um, understanding so much of what we all do subconsciously. So I believe, for example, that we, we all read eyes. If you think about when you meet someone with dark sunglasses and you can't see their eyes, there's so much missing. And then as soon as you see their eyes, there's so much there. So we all pick up a ton. And I was able to learn um, from teachers very discreet things to look at. For example, in eyes to look at whether they angle outwards or inwards, whether the energy comes out of the eyes or is getting pulled back in the eyes, whether the eyes move and how they move, you know, do they move angularly or do they move in a swirly way? And like when they move in a swirly way, our whole body usually moves in a swirly way. So I can even mm-hmm. see it from the back in some people. You know, does our energy go into the ground? So I think we all pay attention to things like this, but don't know discreetly what to look at. And there's all sorts of body language that we, we automatically know, or we're taught. So common body language things, you know, there might be like arms crossed and pulling back or, um, you know, turning and looking away or, um, there are all kinds of different things. And then there are other things we don't know to pay attention to, like just a little itch can have a lot of meeting. Hmm, Interesting. So is that Mm -hmm. like the body psychology that you talked about? Yeah. Interesting. So how long, how long would you say it took you to kind of grasp the basics for this kind of being able to read people and, and give information? Yeah. So I started studying with um, one teacher in particular in 2005 and then added other teachers in 2009. And the first teacher was involved in more of the work of reading eyes and I basically made it into a graduate program. And so for a couple of years, that's really was my big intense, you know, hobby where I did it just about every evening and all weekend and things like that. Um, So that was, it definitely took a bit of work and, and my teacher was able to get better at reading people working with me and, you know, I was learning and getting better. So we were growing the work together forward, working together and think attuning to each other and connecting with people and finding out what, what resonates for them is really the best way of learning to read. I Um, love that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's like, so I I think we all do see each other and I believe it's each person's experience to discover what's really true of them. So I use a set of archetypes for reading people and I have my sense of what's true, you know, my way of reading. And then it's always for me of validating what resonates for the other person. Sometimes they have false masks, which they're hiding behind and I can help them see through that. Sometimes I discover that I'm not exactly right. And maybe, you know, something that I thought was a mask is actually what's authentic for them. So it's a journey that we do together where my aim is to help people better honor themselves, come to love themselves and be able to express who they are and express their purpose in the world. I love that. Oh my goodness. What an interesting journey for you. So um, uh, let's see. Oh, it's, and I should say, so I was studying with, with someone that does focus on eyes from two traditions that do that work. And then I studied with a number of somatic psychotherapists and that's really what I've blended all together. And then for me, I had no idea I was doing anything intuitive at the time. And that was a later journey, a later phase of my journey. And then the opening of all that in an intuitive way. I love that. I love that. Well, and we've talked about in this show that we all have intuition and it's, it's something that we were born with as human beings. And I believe that that goes right back to because we have a soul. Now, you may or may not, you listening, <laughs> may or may not believe that you have a soul. And I believe we do. And so that's the place I'm going to come from anytime I talk to you, just like I'm going to talk to you like there's a creator of all that is. And I call that creator God. 
And if you don't believe that, that's okay. You believe whatever you, works for you. And in this program, we're going to give you all kinds of different perspectives and avenues and per, and ways of, of learning and growing and exploring really the whole world of spirituality so that you can get what works for you inside of yourself, wherever that lands, right? Whether it lands in your heart, whether it lands in your skin, whether it lands in your ears, whether it lands in a feeling that you have, you know, it doesn't really matter how it comes in. It's simply a matter of opening and saying yes. Wouldn't you agree, yeah. Lorelai, that it's really about in this time of history that we open to what we're really here to do? Yes, I think that so many of us are. We've talked about nature and nurture for so long, and there also is this aspect of soul and spirit, and we're finally starting to include more of this. And I think that our the pathway forward that's best for us and best for all of us, each of us and all of us, is to connect with our soul in this journey of our soul. Yes, absolutely. So you mentioned that um, one of the things that you also do, well, actually, I want to go back to, I know that your your email is connected to this thing called Thrive Types. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what you mean with that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, oh gosh. Well, so when I started off doing my my eye readings, I didn't call them eye readings, I called them personality assessments because I was approaching it from a more scientific perspective. And it was harder for me to, to assess people accurately because I was attempting to think it through and look at details and not use my intuitive capacity. Mm. And I was using these archetypes called thrive types. I, I named them, I call them archetypes for thriving. So thrive types, call them. And I believe that they honor so much diversity in who we are. They look at what a person's natural talents are, what their natural rhythm is, how they make decisions, how they communicate. Um, I can show it briefly on the screen if that's helpful, how we protect ourselves, um, consciousness lessons, all kinds of things like this. And it's a lot of pieces to hold together. And I was like, oh, how do I do this? And, <laughs> and what I discovered is that I had to just sort of let go and hold it more loosely and not quite sure and feel my way through. And, and this felt like it was the best thing. And, you know, in the process, I was opening to my intuition and I had no idea that's what I was doing because I came from the perspective of a scientist and I was also raised as an atheist. It was harder for me to, to open. I'm going to, I'll share my screen super briefly. So yeah. Everyone can see these are the Thrive Types archetypes. So a person's natural talents, their pacing or rhythm, how they make decisions, how they most easily communicate, wow. what motivates them, how they protect themselves, and consciousness lessons, where we start here as babies and grow. So this is a growth journey. There are the Thrive Types that describe who we naturally are and how we can naturally best do things in the world, what we might enjoy the most, find the most fulfilling, how we can make the biggest contributions. And then in most of these traits, we can grow to be fluid, where we can grow to have access to all of them. An important part of that is coming to love how we are. In Worldview, this is a meta lesson um, describing overall like the lessons we're growing in. So this one is more linear. And then these seven talents, just so they're right here. These describe, uh, these are most closely directly, most closely direct connected to our purpose. I describe each person as having three of them in an order of priority. And these have lessons too, where we grow from the outside in, relaxing into who we are. So these are all the different archetypes that I'm looking wow. at in people. That's right. Wow. Types. So much great information. So for those of you who are not able to look at the screen, um, if you if this is interesting to you and you want to know more, um, absolutely get with Lorelai to do some uh, regular work with her. Um, so how do you do your session? Do you do do you do, do excuse me? Do you do them by um, Zoom in person, just one on one, or in groups? Can you share okay, a little so bit about that? Yeah, so I do all these different things. 
I can meet with people in person and I've been meeting with people online for over 10 years and Zoom is great technology that allows us to really see eyes very well. So because I can, if I'm too close to someone, I actually can't read this. I have to be far enough away. I like to see both eyes in the context of their face. I, I can read people that are blind, but it's harder. Um, I can read people in photos. So this is part of how I apply so much of this work. I'll often have one person come to me. I have them send me photos ahead of time. So I get to work with them either in person or online, but they often will send me photos of other people that they have questions about. It might be people that are in their life. It could be a family member. It could be someone that works for them, like all kinds of, all kinds of things. And then I also used to love this for math. I love to use this for matchmaking. So I use this for conscious online dating. So I'm working with the person and I work with them in their online dating profile. And we go looking on the web to find soulmates for them. So perfect. I have people texting photos, videos, all kinds of things. I love that. Well, perfect timing because Bobby from Tampa is on the line and uh, he is my cl my client of two years now from 2021. So Bobby... I would love to talk to you. Hello, buddy. Hey, Pam. Hey, Lorelai. I just got $10 from the tooth fairy earlier. <laughs> I had a tooth extracted yesterday, and I, I I bet that the tooth fairy's got some more stuff for me. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I called in. Plus, I am a graduate now of the Landmark Forum. So, Yay! Also, I was wondering if, Great. Yeah. I was wondering if you guys had any messages for me from uh, Charlie, my life partner, who's been who's passed uh, almost 13 weeks, and her life partner Mary, who's been who's been who's left this world uh, 21 years ago, and they're about they're both now my spirit guides. So okay, so we also um, yes, Lorelai is very very connected in with all kinds of things. She's also connected in a little bit with uh, finding your soulmate, which I thought you would be interested in, Bobby. I thought specifically of you. So maybe yeah. um, Eli, you can talk a little bit about that with Bobby as well. So I'm just going to yeah, give you the floor, my dear. Yeah, that would be great. And by the way, I do work with, I work with individuals. I work with people in groups. I work with people in public at fairs. I give talks. I do all kinds of things. Well, so Bobby, are you, so yeah, well, tell me about your relationship context. So have you been dating or what's happening? I know you have people. I, haven't, I haven't been dating, you know, since uh, Charlie passed. Uh, I am, I am physically totally blind. As I found out in mm -hmm. the forum, no, I am not blind, but, you know, physically I am, but, you know, other, other, a lot of other ways I'm not, but physically my eyes don't work. And, uh, I've been, you know, thinking about, you know, maybe trying to find a relationship and, you know, I've that always, always, that already always listening voice keeps saying it's too soon or you're not good enough. And it's like, it's it's like I want to just say to that voice, "Oh, shut up! I've heard enough of you, and I'm ready to move on with my life and see what happens." Yeah. Well, let's see. So, number one, I'm I'm a big fan of growing through relationships. No one's perfect um, in their expression of who they are in a human as the moment. We're all essence. You know, our essence is, is so lovely and then so whole inside. And I think that we grow through the relationships. So we don't have to reach some stage of, of health before we can date and relate with other people. And I don't think that there's any specific amount of time to wait before we are connecting and dating again. Like we have a sense of when we're ready. I think part of what's important is, um, is if people can be open to exploring before they fully know they're ready, because sometimes we don't know we're ready until we're attracted to someone. And then we haven't had a chance to really open and prepare ourselves the way that we could, a way that supports us so, ourselves more. How long has it been since, since your partner has passed? It's been almost 13 weeks. Saturday will be three months. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so that's, um, that is been, and, and you were together for a long time. I'm imagining. 16 years. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really big time. So in this case, if it was a really close, really good relationship, chances are you're not feeling ready yet. But it's really up to you and whatever your timing is. Where are you with all that? I mean, we were I mean, we were drifting apart, 
when she was leaving this world, I mean, we were talking about separating because, you know, I wanted to live on a bus line. I wanted to live somewhere other than Tampa. She wanted to stay in Tampa. And when she when she was dying, I just felt really bad about the whole thing. I mean, and I told her how much I love her and everything. And I was able to get that part complete with the help of one of the coaches at the Landmark Forum. And uh, so, you know, now I, I feel like I got that complete with her. You know, I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm not yeah, giving it a time it frame, like but I'm... Yeah, well, it actually, it, it sounds great. It sounds like you, you've done a lot of the processing of the parting before before she died. So you're probably readier than a lot of partners have been when when their partner has passed. So yeah, you totally might be there and ready to start exploring and connecting with people. Have you noticed any attractions come up so far? Like, have you noticed that there's been anyone you've seen that you've been drawn to? Or you just started imagining again that you'd date again at some point? Um, I, yesterday when I was at the dental clinic, I mean, there were these two dental assistants that were just so compassionate and, and I thought to myself, I don't know if it was the anesthesia talking or what, but I thought to myself, boy, you know, if one of them was available, I'd sure like to, I'd mm -hmm. sure like to get with them. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So you're starting to feel already. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. So I, there are so many specialized dating sites right now. I was wondering if there was something for people that are blind as a way that you might easily find a partner just that happens to have that in common. And I found something that, um, but I, I'm trying to decide if it's blind and that it just doesn't have photos. It might just not have photos. So you can't see each other, but yeah, so there there might be a specialty site. So I know I work best when I can see eyes. So I want to be able to see you. But um, how well, does this work? Pam? Can uh, I get a photo by text or something? Hmm? I'll give you my I'll give you my phone number, and then I'll send you a photo of me. I'll send you a couple. That's of That's great. Either of you me. can give me yours, or I'm happy to share mine too. Mine is all public, so I can tell you mine, and you can send me a photo. All right. And, and for every, it? and for everyone listening, I give for everyone listening, I give free glimpses. So I'll share one talent if people text me. So my number is 720-352-352-2434. And that's yep, L O R E L I. It's actually not. It's L A U R E L I. But don't worry about spelling my name wrong. That's okay. Okay. Well, I will send you. I'll send you a couple photos, and uh, yeah. So the tooth fairy is going to give me a. Uh, what 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 is it that the tooth fairy is bringing me now? Uh, <laughs> uh, a Laura Lai Shamayo oh. is what. The tooth fairy is bringing well, you. <laughs> yeah, so so I want to I want to help bring you a path to your soulmate. So what I do is I look at your eyes and read your eyes. If it were a whole session, I would want to see photos of your parents and any other caregivers, and also photos of your past partners, because I believe that we're all navigating four lessons and attractions. The first lesson is that we're often attracted to people like our family of origin. I think what happens is that when we go to date and we feel nervous and scared, we go back to what worked to get love and attention from our family, and we end up attracting people like our family. The second thing is that I think we tend to date opposites, like we're taught opposites attract. And I actually think opposites are really hard to be with because we don't like the same things. We don't do things in the same way. And I think the, wa yeah. the reason why we attract opposites is if we think we should be more and less and different than we are, like if we don't like who we are and we're judging ourselves harshly. Then when we yeah. see someone else's eyes that are similar, and for you, it would be feeling the energy of someone's eyes that are similar, um, or just feeling the energy yeah. of someone that's that's um, similar, you might judge them harshly the same way you judge yourself. Yeah. And then we tend to eliminate all the people that are like us, and the only people left are opposites. So I want to get a sense of you, because when I get a sense of you, I'll know better who would make a good partner for you. 
And if I had, you know, more insight in terms of family and partners and things, I could tell you what to avoid also outside of the theory of who you are and what I think would be a better match for you. So, yeah, well, let's see. Have you sent me? Hmm? So Lorelai, you, um, you have a giveaway for the show since Bobby's called in. Oh, and I do. And I'm like, what is my giveaway? So I'm, um, do you have it written there? I know. So I have, a. I'm not tracking what I'm, well, I'm happy to, do, so I definitely give a free glimpse for everyone that um, is that wants to text me at 720-352-2434. And then I bet I have another free giveaway. Let I have a conscious see. online dating guide. I have a conscious online dating guide that I can send out. And um, I have another workbook on Thrive Types. Yeah, Pam, you may have notes on that too. Let but me, yeah, so that's one let thing. Let me I'm... see if I can find it for you. Um, yeah. I... I'm going to get something more from the tooth fairy. Cool. <laughs> you, I told Free you, stuff. you're going to get lots and lots of gifts from the tooth fairy, honey. And, and since yeah, you're more, um, probably more, since you're more auditory, you in particular, I can send you um, a recording of something so you can hear me share about it. Okay. That sounds great. And I'll, I'll even send you my email address. Great. That's, that's lovely. Yeah, so, Good. So you two are now hooked up. I'm so glad. Um, that's an awesome thing. And Bobby, the thing that I want you to really hear about this, and you and I talk a lot, but I really want you to hear that it's not a mistake that you called in and connected to Lorelai. And it's also not a mistake that you are already saying, you know what, I am open and willing to receive gifts from the universe in expected and unexpected ways. That's a mantra that my yeah. husband actually coined, <laughs> which is great. Because now the universe knows that you are ready to take on whatever your soul is ready to give you um, what's next, whatever that looks like. So really allow yourself to receive all kinds of support from anywhere it comes in. And that's what you're doing I'll, by saying yes. All right. Yep. So welcome to the show. Thank you for calling in, sweetheart. Have an amazing day. And you and Laura you will have a great connection. And know right. that you absolutely loved in this moment. And have a beautiful, beautiful day. You too. Love you guys. Love you too, honey. Have a good day. All Thanks right. so much, Bobby. Bye-bye. All right, folks. So that's how it works. You know, if you are wanting to touch in with us, we've still got time to do that. The number is 1-800-930-2819. If you want to call in, if you'd rather type it in to the chat, you can do that at Transformation Talk Radio, and we will get your information and your questions. If you want a healing or a have a concern we can talk to you about that as well um let's take uh let's take just a like a couple minute break here so that you can regroup get a drink of water use the restroom whatever you need to and we'll come back and see how we want to finish up this hour to the empower me show i am pam bright i am your hostess for this program and i'm here with my dear friend lorelei shamayo we just had an amazing caller call in and get a reading from lorelei and they're going to do a little work together um, after the the show's over and if you want one if you want to you know get a little bit of this too you can call in or talk and talk to lorelei and myself if you want a little healing you want a little touchstone for helping you in the next part of your journey we're here for you if you want to call in so uh the numbers on your screen you can also type in uh to transformation talk radio and talk to us that way so the other piece of the journey that lorelei has been on is that she is the i call you a facilitator i don't know what you call yourself as the kind of the the grand poobah of the Miwi fairs, <laughs> but uh, 
she's the she's the organizer, if you will, of these amazing psychic fairs that she's been doing for how many years now? Yeah, it's been since 2014. So it's just been going and going. Holy cow. Okay. So that's quite a long time. So they've been going since 2014. Somehow, I don't even know how I connected with you about these, but somehow you and I met, our paths crossed. I saw a flyer or somebody posted something somewhere and I said, hey, <laughs> oh, I know what it was. I was doing massage and mm -hmm. somebody told me about the Blue Moon Fairs in Edmonds. Mm -hmm. That was my very mm -hmm. first fair I ever did. And then somebody else said, you know, there's these other fairs that are somewhere else. And here's this person's name. That's what it was. And we got connected. Mm -hmm. I absolutely fell in love with you because you're amazing at what you do. Mm -hmm. And I would love for people who don't know you and don't know about these psychic fairs in the Pacific Northwest to hear a little bit about how you got started with that and what these things are all about. Great, great. Yeah, I love to share about this. And I think that these messages are generally applicable to everyone stepping into their purpose and doing what they love and starting and growing a business. Because all I did was I took a step forward. I offered something I had access to. Someone said, hey, I have an idea. And I said, okay, I'll experiment and I'll do that. So I mentioned earlier that I had been a scientist and that I had started to work with people on the side. I started working with people directly as a coach, as an entrepreneur owning my own business. And I had one of my colleagues finally kind of, you know, I teased that she like poked me in the ribs and said, hey, you're doing this thing called claircognizance, a form of intuition, and you should go figure this out. I'm like, what, what? I didn't know I was doing any of this. And so when I moved from the middle of the country out to the Pacific Northwest, I knew I had to go explore this. And so as I landed and had new meetup groups come across, one came across, it was psychic, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I should go. And I was all nervous. And I went, I got myself to go. And there were only six of us. And it was the first time they were meeting. And I fit in. It was okay. And they needed a place to meet. We were in a coffee shop at that point, And I had event space in my house where I'd moved to Portland. So I said, come on, we can meet in my house. And we met a few times. It was just a group of practitioners coming together to connect with each other. And we'd open it up to anyone in the community that was interested and wanted to share. And after maybe the fourth meeting, someone said, hey, let's have an event where several of us share our work. Mm -hmm. I could figure that out. I went out and I bought little folding tables and chairs and set up six little booths. I didn't know they were booths. I didn't know I was running a fair around my living room. So I had a place for the public to sit and a place for people with their tables to sit. And we did that for an evening and it went well. So I did it next month and next month and it got to be more than six. It got to be 11 people spread all around my house, you know, in my bedroom and my office and downstairs and everywhere. And it got to be a great big gathering. And I had a colleague that suggested we explore new cities. So we ended up growing into Salem and Eugene and I moved up to Seattle and I needed to figure out renting space in Portland. I think I started renting venues in Portland, but I can't even remember now how it all happened. I learned so much about what kind of venue to have and how to make it comfortable for the people sharing their work and for the people attending. And next thing I knew, we were at 20 people, 25 people, 35 booths, 45 booths. And we're now up to 90 to 100 booths in our cities where I have a venue that can fit that many. Wow. So it's, it's grown from, it started off as practitioners and it grew to be practitioners and people selling products so vendors and lots of people with crystals and jewelry. So it's now metaphysics and wellness, me, we fair and a gem show. So all of us together. Oh my gosh. That's an amazing story. So any of you who are listening, <laughs> please hear me when I say that you matter. <laughs> you who are listening to this program matter. This right here, what you just heard, that's how it starts. You have an idea. You think that your idea is your idea only. <laughs> but then you share it with someone. Then now you've shared it with someone else. So now you are a group, okay? Once you have a group, it only takes two to have a group, okay? <laughs> then from two, that can multiply to four and multiply to six and eight, and it just goes on and on and on, right? So never think that what you have to offer doesn't matter. Don't ever think that your intuition is wrong. Don't ever think that you're out of your mind. <laughs> Don't ever think, I mean, I could go on and on and on, right? 
with yeah. these things that I believe are truths. So and, that's how it starts. Go ahead. And I think part of what's so good is to do these things together in community. So finding that one other person or the two other people. And part of it is being open to ideas when people suggest just things, get a sense of whether it works for you, check and see if it's in alignment for you, and then take steps. You know, I, I felt scared at various points, but I took steps. One of the venues that we're in now in Seattle, I remember when the founder of the Blue Moon um, Spirit Fair um, and I both went to that venue together to explore running a big event there together because I was running a smaller one here and she was running a smaller one there. So Grace and I went and we looked at this big hotel. And we're like, oh, it's too big. We can't do this. It's too big. And, you know, a few years later, I'm there at that big space. Grace has moved to the East Coast. And and so something that can feel too big at first, it might not be the right thing then. And step, 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 you know, and I got there. So what's ended up happening now is, during the pan well, a year before the pandemic, I thought there's got to be a way to run a fair online. So I started running fairs online. And then during the pandemic, more fairs online. And I started running panels online that I used to run in person and so many other events. We now have practice circles like Reiki circles, but for all kinds of modalities. So I've got thousands of practitioners and vendors that connect that, that show hundreds regularly that will show up at my fairs. And then, you know, in our fairs all together, and then there are thousands of people in the community. And so it's been this big ripple effect of me sharing my work, wanting to find community where I could share my work by offering the space that I had and being willing to experiment with running something. I connected with so many practitioners that helped grow me and helped me grow my intuition. And so all of us doing this together has really empowered all of us. I find that it's it's easier for me to do things for other people than for myself. I think lots of us have this. So for me, marketing the whole fair and reaching out to lots of people is easier than just marketing me. And I believe that lots of other people get more fascinated when there's a whole group of people they can go see. And so it's a way that all of us and all of us sharing, we do this together that empower all of us, sharing our own gifts, being in alignment with our purpose, growing ourselves so that we can ripple out more consciousness and transformation and spiritual awareness. So more people are impacted. And then the thousands of people that we touch, you know, and each of us being so much more like grounded and sustainable in our businesses allow us to, to reach so many more people. So it's just been a way that we've been able to really ripple out, um, spirituality and people connecting with, with their guides and spirits and each other. And yeah, it's just, it, I, I never knew I would do this, right? I went from being this little scientist to doing the spiritual work that's connecting so many people together and connecting them with themselves. And I feel so grateful for the journey that I've been on. Mm, that's beautiful. Teary. That's beautiful. So do you feel like you are living your purpose on earth now by doing this? I feel like I definitely, I feel like I definitely am living my purpose. And, you know, I've wondered at times, like, am I to focus more on the fairs and let go of my own personal work with people? Or am I to focus on my personal work with people and let go of the fairs in some way or hand them to someone? And they both feel so much like me. I don't know how to, so yeah. And, and this blending and, and combining things and having so many things happening, it just seems to very much be who I am and what I'm, what I'm here for. Well, I would and supporting I would others and networking. I would put a big exclamation mark on that because it is who you are. And, and I see how you thrive. You just thrive whenever I've seen you in person. And um, I know that these online fairs, when you first started them, it was like, yikes. I mean, I'm still a little intimidated by them, but you know, if spirit wants me to learn all of that, uh, for doing online stuff. Here I am online <laughs> doing this show. It's great. So and, and you're doing possible. body psychology right there saying if spirit wants me, then this is like <laughs> you have support helping you do the online stuff. So you yeah. can be with people and someone else can yes, do the exactly. <laughs> Anything that we want to do in life, anything, even if you don't know how, I have been told to just jump in and just trust. And so here we are trusting that this message is going to get to someone out there in the audience that's going to hear it and go, I want to do that. So if, well, the, that, if that person is listening and they want to do that thing called a psychic fair, how do they connect to you to do that? Yeah, well, so our website is mewefairs.com. I think of it as like me and we all together, like it's growing myself, growing us all in community, like me and we, all of us, right? We are all connected in all one. So 
part of what happened is I, I maybe a theme in my journey is that I'm open to ideas. I'm open to suggestions other people have. I don't think of myself as the real innovator. I think of myself as more of the the hearer and the connector and then the implementer. So by having all these events online, I heard what people asked for. And one of the big things they asked for are ways to step into offering their own work. So we have groups for um, giving you support and starting and growing your intuitive business. We have practice circles where you can practice your gifts with peers in a safe container, getting support from other practitioners. So, and you get exposure to lots of different practitioners at that. You can come watch all kinds of panels and listen to practitioners answering questions. And you can sit there with your pen and your paper when people ask questions, scribbling and drawing. And, you know, you could, you could finger paint, you could do whatever you want and see if what comes for you comes through the practitioners on the panel. So you get a chance to work essentially with other mentors for free. You can come to all these panels and there's one tonight, for example, ask your angels and guides at 5.30 PM Pacific time tonight. Um, we have the fairs where that's often an easier way to get started online. If you live far away in the fair, we start off in the main room and then we go into breakout rooms. And so it's a little bit of exposure with a group on stage, but you can also stay in the back and then you get a breakout room, like a little booth. And it's only for three hours in there. You can have conversations with people. You can give presentations, you can do group readings and you can do as much practice as you want in the practice circle before you come to the online fair. And then you can also bop into other rooms and get support from colleagues. We have, oh gosh, there are just so many things. We have training panels where in a panel, there are several practitioners that answer questions from the audience. We have a training panel where I and another practitioner support other people to be on stage that are getting new experience. So they get support from us before and after, and we can always jump in and help them during if they want that. And for practitioners out there, you're welcome to contribute and help run these. And the hardest thing is standing in the back of the training panel where other people are on stage and we can't share. <laughs> oh my gosh. In the in-person fairs, so we're currently in so many cities in Washington and Oregon. I, we're adding four new cities this year already. I'm just like, wow, I'm actually wow. growing this much. Yeah. So in addition to being in Eugene and Portland and various places in Seattle, we're also going to be in, and we were in Anacortes last year. We're in Anacortes again, north of Seattle. We're in Ocean Shores for the first time. We're going to be in Tacoma for the first time. We just added Yahats, Oregon for the first time. And I'm going to Ashland, Oregon for the first time later in the fall. So, whoa, so much growth. Woo! And yeah, like I can't believe, you know, if I thought like, do I want to add four cities at once? They're like, no, I wouldn't do that. That's a lot. But I just said yes and yes. And and they feel in alignment. I'm I'm going to places that I have some connection with already. And it feels really good. Um, so I was saying at the in-person fairs, we've always, I've always had a small, medium, large, extra large, like I've given like little people that need a little teeny booth and can't afford much. I've given them ways to do that. And I give people ways to trade. So on the online events, people can help market as a way of paying for their booth or in person, people can come help do setup. It's a way that really supports us to get help. And it supports other people to have a smaller investment to get started. And then, you know, we do this thing called the intuitive panel in the beginning of the in-person fairs. Mm -hmm. We have, it's sometimes it's 20 of us up together on stage, um, sharing about what we do and answering questions from the audience. And it's not just only great for the audience. It's so great for us as practitioners too, because again, we get to hear each other and learn from each other and play with how we can answer questions together. It's just so much fun for all of us. And we know that the people in the audience get great benefit of this. They get to ask a question. It's only the price of admission for the online fair. We do this for about 45 minutes and it's free. So they get to ask questions and hear from many practitioners, you know, short answers, but they get to hear from many people. And they get to take like the risk of asking and finding out what happens. And um, it's only, you know, so, so many people are there um, and everyone gets to learn from all the questions that are asked and all the questions that are answered. It's so, it's just, I feel so blessed to be able to do this all together. Mm. Yeah. I feel like yes. I, I wanted community when I was a little kid and, and by just stepping and stepping, I've managed to like, I found my people and found my community and found a way that I can be of service at the same time. And that's what it's all about right there. That's really what it's all about. You know, I've talked a lot in this show about it's no longer about being alone. You know, there's many of us who have have our own businesses and oftentimes we feel lonely because we're all by ourselves, right? Now in 2023, more and more of us are finding that we want to be in community. We want to collaborate with other practitioners. We want to be able to get more 
like touch more and more people in the world. And this is a beautiful way to do that and to spread yourself. Like there's so much of you to give <laughs> so much of you, the audience, you, the person that's listening to this so much of you to be allowed to spread, spread yourself around the world you know we tend and to there's so many more people bubbles. that are there's so many more people that are out of the broom closet that there's more support and understanding and acceptance and encouragement coming out of the broom closet and then also if people aren't ready to do that if they're some of their work life just wouldn't accept it someone can create a pseudonym and and publicize themselves that way where it doesn't get linked back to the other parts of their life so there mm -hmm. are all kinds of ways that people Take, take steps to share who they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if this resonates with any of you that are listening and you want support, both Lorelei and I are available for you. That's what this program is dedicated to is you, the spiritual seeker and listener to the program to really take a hold of the support that's available here. So Lorelai is available. Her information um, you've been hearing about, go to mewefairs.com. You can uh, go to, you can email. You, can go you want you to can go to intuitive, yeah, intuitiveireading.com or okay. matchmakingsoulmates.com. Or you can email me at Lorelai at thrivetypes.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-L-I at t h r i v e e t y p e s dot com okay and my phone number seven two zero three five two two four three four i am reachable wonderful wonderful and if you are needing to have that typed in just just contact transformation talk radio or myself and i will get you that information um you can also just put in me we fair <laughs> And up will come that information on Google. So I know that that will work. Um, I am available at brightbutterflynetwork.com. And so you can reach me there and I'll get you all hooked up with whatever you need from me. I am a channel, an intuitive channel, as well as a light language channel and, and uh, a spiritual seeker, as well as a a way shower to those that are ready to open up to the fullness of who they are. So we're just kind of winding ourselves down now for this amazing hour together. Are there any last words that you feel like are important for the audience to hear today, Lorelai? I guess maybe the, uh, listen to yourself, take risks to be yourself. And take risks to find people that are like you. It might not feel like a risk. It might feel like a great joy. Be who you are in the world. Find other people that really resonate with you, appreciate you, encourage you to be you. Um, be you and find the people that want you to be you. Mm. Love that. Love that. So um, because I like to do this and I can, <laughs> I'm going to give us a collective card for the journey on the way out. This is from the Lightworkers Oracle deck from Alana Fairchild is her name. So Lorelai, why don't you go ahead and tell me where to stop in the deck? Go across again. I think I want to go back over okay. right there. Right, right there. there. Right there. Okay. We've got, okay, we've got, Four to choose from. So one, two, three, or four? Three. Three. All right. This is the one. All right. So this one is eternal now. Isn't that perfect? Here's a master guide yeah. for you. He's got a beard and he's got his, his mouth open. So he's speaking and he's got his hand out like this. So he's receiving as well as giving to himself. So those of you who are watching or listening, the eternal now, this is the only moment we have is right now and right now and right now and right now. <laughs> this is it, folks. So I'm so glad you tuned in. I'm so glad that I was able to be with you today, Lorelai. I'm eternally 
grateful to you for who you are in the world and what you do in the world. And I feel like I have found another soul sister for my tribe. I'm so glad. Yay. And I can't wait to do some more collaborations together. Yes, it's great. And yes, for everyone, eternal now, be you right now. Be you right now and now and now. And Yay! <laughs> we love you. We love you. We love you. Have a blessed day and know that your life is up to you. Bye-bye folks. Thank you for listening to the empower me show with Pam bright on transformation talk radio. Tune in to learn more about living a fully empowered life. Remember that your life is up to you and you can choose the spiritual path you are on. There is spiritual energy and wisdom in everything and everyone around you. Listen carefully for what the universe is trying to tell you in every moment. You are already being guided along your journey. Call upon your spirit guides anytime you need help with anything. Know that you are safe in every moment, even if it seems that you are not. For more information about Pam Bright, visit brightbutterflyenterprises.com or email the empower me show at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening. We hope to see you next week.